So I've got two arbitrary amino acids here. We recognize the telltale signs of an amino acid. We have an amino group right over here that gives us the amino and amino acid. We have a carboxyl group right over here. This is the acid part of an amino acid. And in between we have a carbon, and we call that the alpha carbon. We call that the alpha carbon. And that alpha carbon is going to be bonded to a hydrogen and some type of a side chain. And we're just going to call this side chain R1, and then we're going to call this side chain R2. And what we're going to concern ourselves with in this video is how do you take two amino acids and form a peptide out of them? And just as a reminder, a peptide is nothing more, a peptide is nothing more than a chain of amino acids. So chain, chain of amino, chain of amino acids. And so how do you take these two peptides, or sorry, how do you take these two amino acids and form a dipeptide like this? A dipeptide would have two amino acids, that would be the smallest possible peptide, but then you could keep adding amino acids and form polypeptides. And a very high level overview of this reaction is, is that this nitrogen uses its lone pair to form a bond with this carbonyl, with this carbonyl carbon right over here. So this lone pair, goes to this carbonyl carbon, forms a bond, and then this hydrogen, this hydrogen, this oxygen could be used net-net to form a water molecule. To form a water molecule that's let go from both of these, from both of these amino acids. So this reaction, you end up with the nitrogen being attached to this carbon and a release, a release of a water molecule. And because you have the release of this water molecule, this type of reaction, we've seen it many other times in other types of, for with other types of molecules, we call this a condensation reaction or dehydration synthesis. So con, condensation, condensation reaction or, or dehydration synthesis. Dehydration. We saw this type of reaction where we're putting glucoses together when we were forming when we were forming carbohydrates. Dehydration, dehydration synthesis. But whenever I see a reaction like this, it's it's somewhat satisfying to just be able to do the accounting and saying, all right, this is going to bond with that. We see the bond right over there. I have, and I'm going to let go of an oxygen and two hydrogens, which net net equals H2O equals a water molecule. But how could we actually imagine this happening? Can we push the electrons around? Can we do a little bit of high level organic chemistry? to think about how this happens. And that's what I want to do here. I'm not going to do a kind of a formal reaction mechanism, but really get a sense of what's going on. Well, nitrogen, as we said, has got this lone pair. It's electronegative. And, it, and this carbon right over here, it's attached to two oxygens. Oxygens are more electronegative. The oxygens might hog those electrons. And so this nitrogen might want to do what we call in organic chemistry a nucleophilic attack on this carbon right over here. And when it does that, you know, if we were doing a more formal reaction mechanism, we could say, hey, well, maybe these one of the double one of the double bonds goes back, the electrons in it go back to this oxygen, and then that would have a negative, and then that oxygen would have a negative charge. But then that lone pair from that double bond could then reform. It could reform. And as that happens, as that happens, this this oxygen that's in the hydroxyl group will take back both of these electrons. Would take back would take back both of those electrons. And now it's going to have an extra lone pair. Now it's going to have an extra lone pair. And let me do that by erasing this bond and then giving it, giving it an electro, extra lone pair. It already had two lone pairs. It already had two lone pairs. And then when it took that bond, it's going to have a third lone pair. And then it's going to have, it's going to have a negative charge. And now you could imagine it's going to grab a hydrogen proton someplace. And now it could just grab any hydrogen proton, but the, probably the most convenient one would be this one. Because if this nitrogen is, giving, is going to use its, this lone pair to form a bond with carbon, it's going to have a positive charge, and it might want to take these electrons back. So you could imagine where this one of these lone pairs is used to grab this hydrogen proton, and then the nitrogen can take these electrons can take these electrons back. So hopefully you didn't find this too convoluted, but I always like to think, well, what could actually happen here? And so you see the, this lone pair of electrons from the nitrogen forms this orange bond with the carbon. It forms this orange, this, let me do that, an orange color, if I'm gonna call it an orange bond. It forms this orange bond. This is what we call this orange bond. We could call this a peptide bond, so that, or peptide linkage, peptide peptide bond 
sometimes called a peptide, peptide, peptide linkage. And we have, and then we have the release of a water molecule. And so you have this oxygen is this oxygen, and you could imagine uh, this hydrogen is this hydrogen, and this hydrogen is this hydrogen right over here. And so net net, it all works out. Now, when I first saw this reaction, I was like, okay, that, that kind of makes sense. Except for the fact that in, at physiological pHs, amino acids don't tend to, to be in this form. In physiological pHs, you're more, likely, you're more likely to find this form of the amino acids. To find them as zwitter ions or zwitter ions. Zwitter ions. Let me write down that word. It's a fun word to say. Zwitter and it's one word, but I'm going to write the two parts of the words in different colors. So you can see it's saying it's a zwitter ion. So what does that mean? Well, zwitter in German means hybrid. It's a hybrid ion. It's an ion. It has charge on, on different ends of it. It has parts of, parts, of the, parts of the molecule have charge, but when you net them out, you have, it is neutral. So they have, parts are charged, but it is neutral overall. And so at physiological pHs, the, the amino, the, the nitrogen end of the amino acid tends to grab an extra proton, becomes a positive charge, and the carboxyl group tends to let go of a proton and has a negative charge. So this is your, and this is actually going to be an equilibrium with the forms that we just saw before, but at physiological pHs, it will actually tend to the zwitter, zwitterion or the zwitter ion form. And so how do you get from this form to, what, to, to form a peptide bond? Well, you could imagine, you could imagine this character over here, after giving its hydrogen protons, has an extra lone pair. So it's got, the, it's got one lone pair, two lone pairs, and then it's got. This, I'll do the extra lone pair in. I'll do the extra lo, lone pair in purple. It's got an extra lone pair. Well, maybe it could use it could use that extra lone pair to either grab a proton from from the solution, or maybe just for for accounting convenience, we say well, maybe it just bumps in the right way to grab this proton, and then allows and then allows the nitrogen, and then allows the nitrogen to take back these electrons. And if it did that, if it did that, well, then you're getting at least when you're looking at this carboxyl group and this amino group, you're going to get to the form that we just saw. If this gets a hydrogen here, this is going to become a hydroxyl. And if this if this nitrogen takes back these two electrons from this pair, then it's just going to be NH2. So it's going to be it's going to be at least this part of the molecules are going to be just what we started with up here. And so you can imagine how you get back to the peptide linkage, the peptide linkage, which we have right over here. This is the peptide linkage. And then the only difference between the resulting, the resulting peptide that I have in this, in this reaction, I guess you could say, in the previous one, is this is the zwitter, zwitter ion, the zwitter ion form, where at this carboxyl group, I still have it having donated its proton to the solution. And over here, the nitrogen, this nitrogen, has taken a proton from the solution. So it has a net neutral charge, even though you do have a charge at either end. So hopefully, Hopefully you found that fun.